As Loretta mentioned, the exhibition is an exhibition we hope you'll get up to see at UMass and the Fine Arts Center. It's quite extraordinary. It's an attempt on the part of 10 uh, extraordinarily diverse artists to think through the meaning of one of the really consequential lives in African and American history as a whole, the life of W.E.B. Du Bois. So we had a wonderful opportunity when, when Loretta asked me and the, the group KOS, Kids of Survival, to uh, work on a work that would be inspired by the great life and legacy and spirit and I would say love of W.E.B. Du Bois. We came up and we met, and don't, I always embarrass him, but Michael, Jelaine is one of the greatest art educators in the nation. And we rocked it. It was absolutely beautiful. And so the work that we created, we created individual works, and then the works that we created are now uh, in the exhibit, inspired by the great text published in 1920 by Du Bois called Dark Water. And it was so joyous and exciting for us. This is where actually baptizing pages from the first edition of Dark Water. So what you have in the pages when they are placed on the wall is this, it's, it's this beautiful river-like image. It is glistening in gold. Uh, essentially, we took all our visual cues from the text. One of my greatest favorite lines of Du Bois is uh, he says, I sit beside Shakespeare, and he winces not. That moved me at a very young age, and I never in my wildest dreams thought that I would be placed in a position where I could take that sentiment and put it into daily action for the transformation of young lives, institutions, and communities. And I'm a witness that our project helped do that. My name's Mary Evans. I, I was born in Nigeria, but I, I mostly grew up in, in England from the age of five. I've been commissioned to make a piece of work for the Du Bois Center in Accra, Ghana. It's where Du Bois is buried and I was walking around and somewhere, I don't know whether it was on his tomb or somewhere I noticed that his birthday is February the 23rd, which is also my birthday. So the piece that is on in UMass is a version of this and it's called Held, February the 23rd. In Ghana you have what is left of the, the kind of slave forts and castles where enslaved Africans were held before being transported to the Americas and the Caribbean. So this, this piece of work is, is kind of my interpretation of what those spaces might have looked like, um, kind of peopled with, with African figures waiting to be um, transported. My work is nearly always based on some kind of historical event or um, piece of information or document in some way. I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in looking at how people move around the world. I moved from West Africa to Europe as a five-year-old and it's what fascinates me in general about, it doesn't matter what your diaspora is or wherever it might be from, there's something that interests me in the, there's a kind of sadness in taking on an epic journey like that. and. The hope is that one day you will return to, to that place. But then there's a kind of resignation, I think, also. You, live, you can live for 50 years with the resignation that you'll never return. And that's one of the things that kind of inspired me about Du Bois. He, he was proud to be African-American, but he, he campaigned to be seen as an American and to have the civil rights that was due all Americans and, in the end, all humankind, you know. so. He, he moved around the world, he was an internationalist and he was a pan-Africanist and that's kind of what I'm interested in, in, in being involved in this project. I'm Latoya Ruby Frazier, I am an artist and a photographer from Braddock, Pennsylvania. Braddock is a historic steel mill town located nine miles outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and it runs along the Monongahela River. Two historical significant things about Braddock is that it's the first uh, town where Andrew Carnegie's steel mill, the Ecker Thompson plant, is located um, since 1872. And it's also where his first library, the Braddock Carnegie Library, exists. And it was just marked as a National Historic Landmark this past spring. And I embrace my heritage of you know coming from a steel town that was created and developed by Andrew Carnegie and there are a lot of things that you know my family does culturally that come from people from Germany and Scotland. And so I feel very much a, a part of that. 
And so my work is a corrective to that history and that omission and also uh, addressing a lot of uh, not only social and economic concerns, but environmental concerns. Anyone who was born and raised from Braddock and is still there today is suffering from terminal illnesses. You know, as a youth that was very aware that I was born into poverty and a harsh reality, the only thing I knew to do was to pick up a camera. In 1930, he addressed the, the crowd and said, I'm gonna talk about something from a philosophical point of view that you're not gonna expect the condition of the Housatonic River. You know, he lived next to that river, and what he witnessed was that people, you know, threw waste in it, and basically the town turned its back on this river. I think that it's very important for people to be aware that Du Bois had environmental concerns, and uh, this is something that is seldomly discussed or talked about. People don't think of Du Bois as an environmentalist. It was just very important for me to highlight that about Du Bois. Our injuries have to be acknowledged in some way, and this is the way I know how best to do that. Um, I'm Demaya, and I did a, the project with Tim Rollins, and I'm from the Springfield Renaissance School, and I'm in eighth grade. I like your pictures, they're, they're really cool. Um, <laughs> And I asked my mom for a camera so that, yeah, but, so that I could start taking pictures. So. <laughs> this is something that, like, I really, the first time I did something that had a lot of meaning to it. Some people who saw the exhibition actually made the connection between Tim's work and Latoya's work, the, the river and the color. Yet a beautiful golden glow. What is that golden glow? So it's just a beautiful, beautiful way to to think about the interconnectedness of all four of you <laughs> having produced this amazing. Thanks project. very much, Ajibadi. That's good. Thank yeah. you.